Jay here from Stretford Paddock, and this is a special one-to-one -one interview with Dutch football expert Gert Langendorf, who knows all about Ajax and a certain man called Eric Ten Hag. So we thought we'd pick his brains and say, see what he can tell us about the Dutch manager. Um, Gert, thanks for coming on the channel again. I think we had you on last time talking about Donny van der Beek, is that right, a little while ago? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Yeah. I think about 18 months ago, yeah. It seems like an eternity ago then, when we were signing Donny van der Bay, Oli was at the wheel, we are all full of uh, hope and ambition, but it's been a bit of a difficult time being a Manchester United fan recently, I'm not going to lie. Um, there's obviously loads of stories and rumours surrounding Eric Ten Hag coming to Manchester United. I want to ask you the first and most obvious question. Do you think he could do a good job at Manchester United if he does end up coming here? Oh, most definitely. I mean, if you look at what he's done in the Netherlands, uh, it, it's basically been quite incredible because he started out at a, at a very small outfit called Go Ahead Eagles. And they, they were basically playing at a semi-amateur level, even though it was in the second league in the Netherlands. And he just turned them around and got them promoted for the first time in 17 years. And he did the same at Utrecht later on. Uh, they were basically sliding down the table, uh, losing their mojo. And basically what he did, he just tweaked it a little bit. I got a few players in here and there and guided them to Europe and, and, and to the Dutch uh, Cup final. Um, then, of course, he went to Ajax. And, well, we, and we all know how he did there. He reached it at, at a semi-final of the Champions League and not just, just by buying, buying players, but uh, just to let players buy into his uh, way of working and not only on the pitch, but also uh, at board level. He, he basically made them listen. Uh, to what he wanted, I, I was very open about it, very, very direct. So this is the way I want to work. Uh, those are the kind of players I need. And this is how we're going to do it. And if you trust me, I will deliver. And that's what he's done over the last five years. He's obviously had a lot of success as I, at Ajax, as you've mentioned there. At United, there's a lot of confusion about who's in charge, who's signing off on transfers. The club seems like it's in a bit of a mess. Now, you look at Ajax, which seems to be well-organised. It seems to have a proper structure in place. You look at Manchester United. Do you think there could be any chance that he has reservations about coming to United because of the way the structure is or the lack of structure at the club? Yeah, quite possibly. But obviously, he will see the challenge and he will see uh, the team. And obviously there's, obviously, there's loads of talent there. But as long as he knows there's a, there's a direct line um, to to the person in charge of, of, of transfers, whoever that may be, um, and they'll sign it off. So, like, listen, I'm the man, I'm the manager, I'm doing the job, uh, and you will sign it off. I'm pretty sure you will happily take the job. But, yes, most definitely there will be some reservations in, uh, in that respect. And what about Ajax? They're obviously going to be reluctant to let him go. Do you think there could be an issue there? Or do you think because he's, his contract, I think, has another, is it another year or so left on it? Do you think they may maybe sort of resign to the fact that if, if United or someone else comes in for him, they, they have to let him go? Yes, most definitely. He's been there uh, for five years. Last year, he signed a new deal. Uh, based on the fact that hardly any of the players were leaving the club, this time around, it's different. Uh, uh, Daily Blind is, is, is more or less on his last lax. Uh, he, I think he's 32, 33 now. Uh, Gravenberg is going to go to Bayern Munich, most likely. Uh, Masraoui, the, uh, uh, the fullback, is going to leave. And so basically, he's going to have to rebuild the whole team. And he's, he's more or less said uh, to a bunch of colleagues of mine that he is ready to, uh, to leave and accept a new challenge. So... I'm quite sure that Ajax know about that and I will already be on the lookout. So I don't think it'll be much of a struggle to, to keep him. But if he leaves, or when he leaves, he wants to leave with the title. So um, at the top of the league now, uh, so just a couple of months ago, um, so come May, uh, he'll definitely uh, be ready to, to talk and he'll be open for business. You mentioned some of the successes of he's had and, and the ways he's impressed you. What about the job he's done at Ajax? What has been the most sort of standout thing about that for you during his tenure that sort of made him so in demand? Um, well, first, obviously, he's a master tactician. Uh, he, he more or less worked at Bayern Munich under Guardiola. So, uh, But the people I spoke to, they all said he's a... He loves work ethics. That's more or less the first thing he says when he, when he walks into a new club. So like, this is what I demand, boys. That we're going to work very, very, very hard. 
whoever is not going to buy into me, it doesn't matter who it is, if, if, it's, if it's a team captain or the, or the star player, um, he'll let them go straight away. So, so that will be his first talk. And uh, he's been very, very successful uh, basically with that. And over the years, he's got rid of that work, so to speak. But at the same time, got uh, older heads in, uh, a, daily blend, a daily blend, more or less. It's his uh, tactician on the pitch. And then you got Dusan Talic, you know, the former Southampton player, who uh, is more or less the uh, and the gym bunny. He more or less inspires other players to, uh, to, uh, to work on their physique a lot and their nutrition as well. So, and he's very, very good with uh, different cultures. So, so unlike Louis van Gaal, for example, who was struggling a little bit with the likes of Angel Di Maria and uh, other South Americans, he's brilliant at that. He's, he studies players and, and makes them feel comfortable, uh, studies their background and will make them buy into uh, whatever is, is at hand. At the same time, he's very, very good at, 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 at blooding um, youth players in the team. And he's been very, very successful with that as well. Um, so, so basically, to sum it up, master tactician and, and very, very good with uh, getting players on board to, to work as hard as they possibly can. You mentioned that about the players he's worked with and how he gets the best out of them. Do you think he could be looking if he does move on to United, at any of the Ajax current squad and wanting to take one or two of them with him? Uh, possibly, but unfortunately, the uh, the best players, including Gravenberg, are already going elsewhere. Um, he's about to sign a deal with Bayern Munich, apparently. Um, but one or two players uh, might be able to uh, to come over. Uh, or former players. Uh, look at the likes of Matthijs de Ligt. He is, he's fairly settled at, at Juventus. But he might be able to uh, to leave or look in or look in elsewhere, and he seems to be made for the Premier League as well. And yeah, his bond with with, with Ten Hag is absolutely brilliant. So if he gets the call, he'll be more than willing to uh, at least listen to uh, whatever is on offer. And you know, Frankie de Jong, you know, at Barcelona, you never know what Xavi is going to do in, in the next couple of months. Maybe a complete overhaul. And uh, if, if Frankie feels slightly unsettled, he'll be more than happy to uh, to join the likes at United if uh, Tenak is there. Um, one player, obviously, we spoke about him last time me and you were chatting, or you, sorry, you were chatting, I think, with Steve, was, um, was Donny van der Beek. Now, he's obviously gone on loan to Everton. I was speaking to an Everton fan there the other day who was saying he's been impressed with him. There's still question marks about his United future. Do you think if Ten Hag comes into Manchester United, he'd want to work again with Donny van der Beek and, and Donny van der Beek would want to work again with him? Oh, most definitely. Uh, yeah, they go back a long time, and he basically he basically had his breakthrough at Ajax. But at the same time, uh, Ed Ten Hag is not uh, blind to uh, at the Premier League. He knows what the challenges are, and of course, there's still question marks uh, yeah, around Donny van der Beek. Is he physically strong enough for the Premier League? Or does his type of play uh, suit the Premier League? And that is what uh, Ten Hag will will look at, and he'll be that honest if he thinks, "Sorry, uh, Donny, but." Uh, I think you should go to Spain or Italy or, or even Germany uh, if he thinks it won't work. But uh, given his talent, he might definitely give it a go. And, uh, you know, come August, uh, I decide what to do with him. Do you feel that Eric Ten Hag, I mean, he's the, he's the the name that keeps getting mentioned, but there are others as well. The likes of Maurizio Pochettino, for example, I think uh, Lopetegui has been mentioned as well. Do you think Ten Hag is the right man out of everyone that's been linked with United for the Manchester United job? Yes, if you look at all the football aspects, uh, yeah, it's met and his managerial powers, so to speak. Uh, he's definitely the right man for the job. Obviously, in the Premier League, it's not just about uh, how you are on the pitch and how you are internally. You also have to, um, you know, front the team. You, you more or less have to be the yeah, the PR man. You know, like Klopp uh, at Liverpool and 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 Guardiola at, at City. Um, the question is, can he be that man? Um, over the years, he's he's improved a lot. He comes across a lot more as a, a as a full blown manager in, in terms of you know elite trainers. Uh, but, but that will be my question mark. Uh, will the uh, will top players buy into him uh, straight away? Will they accept uh, how good he is and that he is in charge? That will be my only question. But then again, uh, at Pochettino, 
yes, he was at, at Spurs, but basically never won anything. Um, so, so Tin Hock will come in with a clean slate as well. And he reached the semis as well in the Champions League final. So perhaps players will see that, all right, come on, you've worked with Guardiola, you know what you're doing. Uh, you've got uh, you've got contacts all over Europe to get the right players in. So so why not? But uh, And he knows the Premier League he, because he has studied the Premier League. He may, he may not have coached here, but he is definitely a student of the game. He's one of them people who doesn't do anything else but football. That is his, his job, uh, at least 70 hours a week at Ajax. But in, in his spare time, he watches videos from all over Europe, um, Syria, the Spanish league, but most definitely the Premier League. So he will know what you know what's you know what's coming. He will be prepared. So in that sense, I'd say he's definitely the right man. Okay, you're just making me more and more sort of <laughs> determined that we've got to get him now. If we don't end up with Eric Ten Hag, I'm I'm going to be absolutely gutted after after listening to you. Um, just one final question I wanted to ask you. He's obviously, you know, you've mentioned it there, and everyone knows there's a big job here at Manchester United to be done. You're also going up against the likes of Jurgen Klopp, against the likes of Thomas Tuchel, against the likes of Pep Guardiola. You mentioned he'd worked under. Do you feel like he could go toe to toe with those managers? Do you feel like he's got what it takes to challenge against those? Those managers obviously if he's backed the right way by the Manchester United board but do you think sort of tactically and, and sort of in his ability wise do you think he could go up against the very best in the Premier League yeah definitely he's he's technically very sound and uh, like I mentioned before he worked on the Guardiola at, uh, at Bayern Munich he is a very good tactician in his own right so he could definitely uh, prove to be one of the gems uh managerial wise so he could definitely beat them uh, tactically and come up with a it will way for United to uh, to beat the likes of Liverpool, City, and and, and Chelsea. So I'd like to think so. Um, and and he's a very modern trainer as well. So it's not like Jose Mourinho who's more or less still stuck in in, in the noughties, still doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, at Ten Hag overhauls his 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 plans, his, his way of playing all the time if he thinks that's necessary. So yeah, most definitely. But give him time, you know, give him at least a year to, to, to settle in instead of getting impatient. But obviously it's United, so patience is uh, difficult to come by. That's a good point, though, if I could just get you on that. Yeah, how important do you think that is? We have patience with him because you said there, you just mentioned it. Obviously, we know there's a big job. We know that the likes in terms of the squads, City and Liverpool are ahead of us. You know, it's going to take a little bit of time, even for a manager as talented as, as Eric Ten Hag. Yes, Exactly. And even at Ajax, uh, particularly in, the, in his first three months, the Dutch newspaper said he was, he was definitely going to be a failure. And after three months, it worked out. And because it was Ajax, he was given time because obviously he was still winning his matches and he was doing, he, he was doing all right. But it, if you're at United and you're up against the likes of Chelsea, City, uh, Liverpool and, and Arsenal, and suddenly you're sitting in fifth, um, I've all that worried the board and the fans. Um, Hopefully not, but uh, if we're given this, if we're given the score, yeah, obviously there, there's obviously there are a few problems here and there. But if you look at the core, uh, very talented group of players, very very talented group of individuals. So if perhaps with a few tweaks here and there, he might be able to yeah, to definitely challenge for the title in his first season. And maybe behind uh, City and Liverpool just a little bit, but at least uh, fighting ready. Yeah. That's that's it. That's it. You've sold me completely now. I'm going to end up driving to uh, to, to Holland to pick him up. <laughs> it's always a pleasure having you on the channel, honestly. And we'll have to speak to you again when hopefully Eric Ten Hag does arrive. Um, we'll make sure people as well, make sure you are following you. He's got all the updates on, on Dutch football as well. So make sure you, there's a link in the description. Follow him across all the socials. And it's been great chatting to you. And I look forward to chatting to you again. Likewise. So big thanks to Gert Langendorf, the Dutch football expert there. And I don't know about you, but I'm even more excited about the prospects of Eric Ten Hag coming to Manchester United. Will he end up in the Old Trafford hot seat? We'll have to wait and see. Make sure you are following Gert on socials. I've put his uh, link in the description there. Make sure as well you're subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. This has been a one-on-one -on -one interview. <sighs> Come on, Eric Ten Hag, it's all set for a minute. Come on, it's got to be the right decision. Thanks for watching.